Hey booktube, Chelsea the Reading Outlaw here to do the Joy of Christmas tag from Sam at Novels and Nonsense. It's finally Christmas time you guys! It is finally an acceptable amount of time away from Christmas that I feel okay doing Christmas stuff. And my girl Sam loves Christmas just as much as I do from what I can tell. I mean it's not a competition but like girl loves Christmas. So she came up with this Christmas tag just a little bit ago so I'm gonna do it because I love books and I love Christmas and I love tags. Let's do it guys. All right so the first question is anticipation. The book release you are most anticipating and I think for me the book release that I'm most anticipating um well there's one like there's a there's two one is now that they're doing all the complete illustrated harry potters i am so excited for the rest of that series to come out but that's like a long like he's like he's gonna do like one a year so that's kind of like not really an answer to the question but still kind of an answer so there's that first of all but the other one is probably the next um stormlight archives book by brandon sanderson which I know the title is out, but I don't remember it. I'll see if I can find it and link it below. But that is probably the next like big, big book that I'm looking forward to coming out, hopefully in 2016. I believe that's the word on the street is that it should be out in 2016. So if I can find a preliminary cover, I will put one up. If not, yeah, the next Stormlight Archives book is the big release that I am kind of hoping for. Uh, Christmas Songs and Christmas Carols, book whose praises you can't help but sing. Um, have I ever told you guys about a book called The Long Way to a Small Your Planet? It's by Becky Chambers. It's like the best book I read this year. Just a little, just a little sci-fi ditty of literally everything you could want, whether it's action, adventure, romance, humor, drugs and alcohol, race relations, interspecies relations, cuddling, computers. I think that's about it. Have I told you about it yet? It's just, you should. Just a little one. You should go check it out if you get a chance. Long way to a small angry planet. Uh, gingerbread houses. Books with great world building. And I wish I had the first one to show you guys because that's technically where a bulk of the world building takes place. But I lent that one out already for the holidays. So I'll show you the second one, which is The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss. God, look at that hunker. Look at that. Um, Patrick Rothfuss is, I think... I think a wonderful, absolutely wonderful writer. Um, if you do a little bit of Googling, you will find that opinions are kind of split. The Wise Man's Fear is the second in the name of, or in the King Killer Chronicles, the first one of which was the name of the wind. This is day two. Um, I won't tell you anything about it because I don't want to spoil anybody who hasn't read the first one, but safe to say we pick up where the first one left off with the second day of storytelling from Kavoth, our main character, who is repeating kind of the story of his life to a chronicler who has stopped by the inn that he runs. The first book is all about his reflections, like from his childhood up kind of to his like collegiate education. And the second book picks up at his collegiate education and kind of continues onward. I won't say anything else, but the world building in this book, the magic system in this book rivals um, Brandon Sanderson and Robert Jordan. It's a little bit more on the literary end in terms of the way that it's written and the style it has. So if you're looking for a way into fantasy that kind of bridges that literary fantasy gap, I definitely think The Name of the Wind would be a good place to start. But yeah, that is The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss. Next up is A Christmas Carol, your favorite classic. And I wish I had my copy of A Christmas Carol and Other Winter Stories by Charles Dickens, but I don't literally my dog ate it while she ate the cover and so I'm looking for the and it was an old copy anyway which is fine but I'm on the lookout for like the really nice penguin cloth bound white edition so hey all of you out there looking to just randomly gift a stranger a book that's where it's at but instead I'll show you a book that I know you've already seen because I talk about it every time classics come up and that is Little Women. Little Women has wonderful scenes set at Christmas time if you can get through the scene where like I can't I won't even spoil it I can't although can you spoil it? you know I'm gonna say it because this book is old enough cover your ears for the next 30 seconds if you don't want spoilers if you can get through the scene where like Lori and what's his face Meg's future husband like the scene where they surprise the March sisters by bringing home their dad from the Civil War hospital I cannot even talk about without crying and it happens at Christmas and they are singing carols and it is just like the sweetest scene in the entire world so for that scene alone 
I would recommend this book at Christmas time, but it's also just one of my favorite classics. And it covers the full year. You can read it any time of year because there's really great scenes, both indoors and out through for any season. So I would definitely recommend picking up Little Women if you haven't yet. Next question on the list is Christmas Sweets, the book you want for Christmas. I, this is a little bit of a cheat question. Uh, I already know that my husband is getting me the first complete illustrated Harry Potter for my birthday. Um, there was a back ordering issue. So he gave me like a paper printout of the ordering sheet in a card and was like, it'll be here soon. It's not my fault. So he did good. So the other book that I'm really hoping for and that I've specifically requested for Christmas is, uh, The Lost Ocean, the Johanna Baxford coloring book that just came out that's new because I love her work. I love her coloring books and I love the ocean. Uh, the minute I heard that she had an ocean themed one coming out, I, well, I didn't put it on pre-order because I knew it would make a really good Christmas gift, but I put it at the top of my Christmas list with a giant star next to it that was like, please, if you get me nothing else, get me this one book. So hopefully in another month or so, I will be able to positively report that that happened. Even if it didn't, I will be purchasing it for myself. Um, I also heard that she's coming out with a Christmas one, but that could also just like be my wishful thinking manifesting itself on the internet. So who knows, maybe this time next year, I will be specifically asking for Johanna Basford's Christmas coloring book. We can only hope. Uh, let's see. Okay. Number six, candles in the window book that gives you the warm fuzzies. Um, there are two. The first one that's not really my answer because I've already talked about it a lot is the phantom toll booth. This is my big annotated copy that I got last Christmas from my husband. And it's got the story text and also a bunch of annotations. This book always makes me feel better. Always, always, always. But that one's not technically the answer to the question. The answer to the question is what I would consider the girl version of Phantom Tollbooth. I don't believe in gendering books, but it's it's a hand sell that I've, ha I've heard several times, which is the girl who fell... La, la. The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valente. And this is a book about September. And September gets taken into Fairyland. And she has adventures and she battles uh, dragons and she helps free princesses and she makes friends and enemies along the way. And there are now four books in this series. Uh, let's see if I can remember them all. The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in the Ship of Her Own Making. The Girl Who Fell Beneath Fairyland and Led the Revels There. The Girl Who Circumnavig... Or no. The Girl Who Flew Over Fairyland and Cut the Moon in Two. And The Boy Who Lost Fairyland. I think are the four. And then there's a fifth one coming out before too long. But this book is just so adorable. And Catherine Valente has this really, really great talent of breaking the fourth wall and making asides to the reader in a way that both enhances the story and also as an older adult reader you really kind of can sympathize with and she makes commentaries on childhood and imagination and reading and lying and you know having a heart and all of these things that I feel like are the best parts of children's literature and she wraps them up in one little bow and then there's a thing called a wyvern which is like a dragon and a library combined and his name is A through L and he is the cutest so if you haven't picked it up yet it's super super thin it's 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 a middle grade book so you'll fly through it and I just think it will make every part of your day so much better next up uh Christmas trees your favorite book covers I have three to show you because I think they're gorgeous the two you might the first two you might pick up on a bit of a theme the first is the Hakawati and I'm not really gonna say anything about the books I'm just gonna let you drool over the covers there we go look at that And then we have the Song of Achilles and the color similarity is that pattern I was talking about. And I guess also the fact that they're embossed. Apparently turquoise and shiny things are where it's at. And then the most recent cover is this one because I just look at Prudence. She looks so sassy and it's pink and you take off the underbinding and it's also pink. It's just like absolutely to die for. Let's look at it one more time, shall we? I definitely think that we need to look at it one more time once I get the dust jacket back on. She's just so sassy. And then lastly, Christmas joy, your favorite Christmas memory or the best thing about Christmas. My favorite Christmas things are um, it's in the little stuff. I love that we have the same soup. Every night before Christmas, my mom makes something called Celebration Soup, and we've had it every year for a decade. 
I love that every Christmas morning, my grandpa puts on one green sock and one red sock before he comes downstairs. And my dad wears this green sweatshirt he has that has a bunch of cows on it. And it says jingle bowls. Um, and it's just stuff like that. It's just the tiniest little things that we do every year that we get to look forward to and giggle about. And um, yeah, it's the reason for the season after all. So I hope you guys are gearing up to have a really great family time, whether you celebrate Christmas, whether you celebrate Hanukkah, whether it's Festivus or Yule or the Solstice or just a non-religious winter time gift exchange amongst those that you love, whatever it is. I hope that you are having a good time. I hope that you are lucky and blessed enough to be surrounded by friends and family. And I hope that we can all look forward to the new year with a little bit more light. So cheers to everybody. Like, comment, subscribe. Do this tag. Pass on the holiday season. Thanks again, thanks again to Sam for coming up with it. And as always, I'll see you around the internet, guys.